hard interview questions. This time this evil interviewer is going to ask you if can x not strictly equals x return true in JavaScript. And you're like, wait a second. How can something not be strictly equal to itself? Well, take some time, think about it, but don't be ashamed because the first one I looked at it, it was like, I don't think there's a way. Oh boy, there is a way because we are talking about JavaScript and in JavaScript, there's a way for anything. So I tried different things, maybe some primitive value, maybe Boolean, maybe whatever, but you know, it's, it's not going to work. So maybe undefined, no, something like that. No, it's not going to work, but there is actually one that works. And let me show you, it's really simple. See? So it turns out not a number doesn't equal not a number. It's so strange. It doesn't even equal to itself. The solution is X equals not a number. But boy, was I really intrigued by this. And I was like, to try to look around if there's any other way to solve this. And yes, to my surprise, this is not the only solution. Oh boy, there's many solutions. So I started looking and I found a similar thread and a stack overflow that given x not equals x in JavaScript, what is the type of x? And not, do not be mistaken because this is not a strict comparison. This is just x not equals, not double equals. And you know, when we do double not equals, that means there's no type coercion possible. But here it is. Still, I was very interested if what, what the solutions were. And then it occurred to me, as it, I said in my previous video, link in the corner, that there's this object defined property, you know, where we can add the function to a value. For example, let's take a look at the one of the simplest. So every time we get the X, we, re we get a new array. That is always going to be a new array, not the same one. And therefore, it's not going to be equal to itself. And to show you that it's true, let me so X not strictly equals x and it's true these work as long as the values are different and so we can utilize the mat mathematical random function we can create strings from it booleans from it so you know if you need a number then it's you just use math random okay but here he did some tricky mickeys where he created random strings and also random booleans i was looking like oh here is this here is this friend which I haven't seen a long time ago and maybe I should explain what that does. So you see this pipe character and it's not like the, the op or operator like the two. This is called the bitwise or operator and it does completely different thing. So it takes the bit of the value here on the left side and every single bit is going to be compared with the zero here. But why is this useful here? Well, it's not really the bitwise operation here interested because or zero is not going to do anything because that's always going to return the same value, right? If you think about it, something or zero, it makes no difference, right? So what it does, this truncates the value. Hey, future Ernest here. So I need to add some explanation. So when using the bitwise operator, the value is automatically converted into a 32-bit integer. That means that it's automatically truncated. That, that's what I meant to say. Thanks, and now let's get back to the video. Because MathRandom uh, returns a value between zero and one, and he makes a double of it, so it becomes between zero and two, and it truncates the values after the decimal point. So it's a genius solution. I mean, this is, was used because the sensor is like eight years old. Yeah, so the math truncate, I think, is, was not available. So people use this. So it's, it's a very interesting solution. As I was thinking about all of this, and by the way, all of these solutions will work. Well, is there a way when a not strict comparison is re returns false and the strict comparison returns true? comparing the same value to itself strictly or not strictly where you turn a different result. Is, is this possible? I will let you think about it for a second. How would you do it? 3, 2, 1, your time's up. There is a way. And it's not 
really that complicated. So let me scroll down. I came up with this very simple solution. I don't think I don't think we need, need the use strict here. We have this defined property the same way as they did in the in this solution. So it's basically a copy of that code. In the function, we're going to use an, an additional variable in from the window scope called flip-flop. And this flip-flop value is going to change from true to false, and we are going to utilize that to return two different values, two different data types. And we are going to make use of type coercion here. If one time I return false and the second time I return an array, then this is going to be different for this and also for this. And let me show you. It's very, very interesting. So here it says the strict comparison is true while the non-strict comparison is false. So in strict mode, it doesn't equal to itself, but in non-strict mode, it does. And why is that? It's, it's because type coercion, you know, because an empty array, when a coercion happens in this mode, is converted to a Boolean value, which is also false. So this becomes an empty string, but an empty string is a falsy value, and that is false, that equals to false. But in this mode, in strict mode, in strict comparison mode, type coercion is not happening. There is no type coercion, so it's always going to be false. So there. So interviewers, if you want to be even more evil, I would suggest you ask this question. This, this is going to be very, very hard to answer because you can come up with NAN, like think about it or try it, but I don't think anyone is going to come up with this solution like real quick under the pressure. As I always say, if someone asks you, and even if I got this question, I would suggest you run. You run very far because if this is some sort of main question, uh, it has nothing to do with your knowledge of JavaScript, maybe, or some in-depth, whatever, but there's so many things you don't know about, and there's probably so many things that your interviewer doesn't know about. So I would stick to like regular questions like, I don't know, explains this function or do whatever, but oh, no, 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 not this. No, 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 this is, this is too much to me. But there you go. If you encounter someone like that, now you're gonna know the answer to. And by that, I think this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like, subscribe, leave a like, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, why don't you subscribe? I have so few subscribers, I need more. Please and thank you. And by that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one, goodbye.